You finished building your garage shelf display and now you have a ton of space. But all of your figures are on one level and bunched together. I can't see them all. <laughs> What do you do? You could get risers, but you'll need a lot of them in different sizes and they're boring. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a sleek, sexy, and adjustable floating shelf for your garage shelf display. Who would have thought that you could add floating shelves to a garage shelf? Me. That's who. Before we begin, there are a couple of things I'd like to mention. One, this tutorial is based on the 48 by 24 by 72 inch Edsel garage shelf, but this can be made for any size garage shelf of this style. All you need to do is change the measurements of the shelf. And by Edsel, I mean the shelves that have the shelf notches showing, not the shelves that have the shelf notches covered. I have both types of shelves, and I am working on making floating shelves for the other type of shelf. So don't you worry. Papa Costa has you covered. Two, you can add floating shelves to the back of your display or the side. In this video, I decided to go with the back of the display, but there is nothing stopping you from adding a shelf to the side. Three, the cost for the shelves will depend on the price of materials at the time of purchase and your location in the world. We live in unpredictable times and material prices are in flux. Four, all materials used will be linked in the description. Now let's get this party started. Hit it. Hanging bracket, what you will need. 1020 aluminum extrusion, tools, 4.2 metric drill bit, M5 drill tap, drill, clamps, center punch, hammer, Allen wrench. To hang the shelves on the display case, I use two 1020 aluminum extrusions. These are perfect because one side has the necessary channel needed to attach the shelf hardware, and the other side is flat and can sit up against the display case frame. The reason why we're using an aluminum extrusion, and not just fastening the display directly to the display case using the notches, is that the extrusion allows for more stability, so your shelf doesn't tip down due to the weight of your collectibles, and it allows for more flexibility when adjusting the shelf up or down. I bought my 1020 extrusions from FramingTech.com. What I like about Framing Tech is they'll cut the extrusion to your desired length, any length. Initially, I was looking for black extrusions to match the display frame, but I quickly found out that a 1020 extrusion in black is not that easy to find. I did eventually find them on AliExpress, but it would have taken forever ever for them to get here. With only the silver being available, I planned on painting them black. But after putting the shelves together, the silver blended in with the white display quite nicely. So I decided not to paint them. You can't even tell they're there. But don't fret my nerdy friends. For those who want to paint their extrusion black, I will include a link in the description for the video I used to paint my aluminum extrusion hanging brackets. This will be great for those who have a black interior and want their bracket to match the entire interior. To start, we need to figure out the length of the aluminum extrusion, which I will start referring to as hanging brackets. Pick which section of your display case you want your floating shelves in. I planned on putting my floating shelves in the top section of my display, which measures 23 inches tall. I could have made my hanging brackets the full 23 inches, but it didn't make much sense as the floating shelves will never be low enough to lay on the display shelf, and they won't be so high as to be super close to the ceiling of the display. What you should do is measure Measure the height of the frame in the display case section and take a couple inches off each end. To attach the brackets, we'll need to drill holes into them and tap the holes with threads so that a bolt can be used. We'll be using an M5 by 6 millimeter flathead bolt and an M5 by 2 millimeter by 1 millimeter thin washer, along with the slots on the display case frame to hang our bracket. This goes without saying, there should be one hole on each end of the hanging bracket. Take the hanging bracket and place it up against the display frame from the inside. From the outside, you should be able to see the hanging bracket poking through the slots on the frame. Using a pencil, make a mark at the bottom of the slot at one end of the hanging bracket. Bracket, and then go to the slot on the other end of the hanging bracket and make another mark at the bottom of the slot. I did this so when the bolts are in the extrusion, both bolts can lay in the slots on the frame. Now take a ruler and line it up with the marks and make a straight line across the hanging bracket. You'll have two lines on the back of your hanging bracket. For the second hanging bracket, all we need to do is line up the hanging brackets next to each other and extend the line from one hanging bracket to the other. 
Simple as that. Now that we know the placement of the holes, take a small center punch and find the center of the marked line. Then hammer the punch to make a small divot. This divot is essential so that there is a spot to place the drill bit. This will keep the drill bit from sliding on the hanging bracket and it will allow you to drill the hole at the spot you have marked. With a 4.2 metric drill bit, start drilling your hole. A 4.2 metric drill bit gives you a perfect size hole to tap for an M5 bolt. Yeah, baby. You know what I'm talking about. The display case, you filthy animal. Sheesh. Once we're done with drilling, it's on to tapping. So much drilling, tapping, and screwing. You better stay hydrated. Tapping is not that hard. That's what she said. Does that work there? I don't know. Moving on. First, we gotta clamp down the hanging bracket. Next, take your M5 drill tap and start screwing into the hole perpendicularly. As you are screwing the tap in, every once in a while, you will wanna reverse it and unscrew for a turn. I will put a link in the description for the video I use to learn how to tap screw holes. Once the tapping is done, we're gonna wanna check out that hole and see if our bolt fits. <gasps> Oh yeah, so good. <laughs> You're dirty. The frame. What you will need. 2020 V-slot extrusions, M5 by 10 millimeter button head bolts, M5 by 10 millimeter by one millimeter washers, tools, drill, 3 16 drill bit, Allen wrench, optional tools depending on how you're gonna make your holes, drilling jig, ruler, center punch, hammer. For the frame, we will be using 2020 aluminum extrusions. You can also use T-slot aluminum extrusions, but I went with the V-slot because I found this amazing amazing company in the UK called Oozenest. They will literally cut any size of aluminum extrusion that you need down to the millimeter. This is great because you won't have to saw the aluminum and there won't be any scraps or leftovers. You only order what you need. They will also tap the ends of the extrusions and add threads so you can screw the bolts into the ends. Another great thing about Oozenest is they're the least expensive even with shipping to the US from the UK which is crazy to me. I'll put the links in the description to Oozenest and all the parts I ordered from them so you can grab your own. First, we must figure out the length that we want our shelf to be. Since the floating shelf will be in the back of the display, we will measure the inside of the back frame. If we decided to put the shelf on the side of the frame, we would measure the inside of the side of the display case. Since the extrusions come in metric sizes, I decided to measure the shelf in millimeters. For this display case, it comes out to 1225 millimeters. Now this isn't the final length of our shelf because we're going to need to take into account the hanging brackets and the T-shaped brackets that we are going to use to attach the floating shelf to the display case. The width of a 1020 aluminum extrusion is, you guessed it, 10 millimeters. Hence, the 10 in 1020. And the T-bracket is about one millimeter thin. We'll total the two 1020 brackets and two T-brackets which gives us the total of 22 millimeters. We will subtract the 22 millimeters from the 1225 millimeters and get 1203 millimeters. No matter what length your display case is, you will always need to subtract 22 millimeters from it to take into account the hanging brackets and the T brackets. Now that we know the length of the shelf, we can now decide the width. The width of the display case is 24 inches. So I decided to go with one floating shelf half that size and one floating shelf a quarter of that size. So the width of the shelves will be 12 inches and six inches respectively. Having these two shelves be different sizes will allow us to have them close together without sacrificing viewability of your figures. The length of our aluminum extrusions will consist of having the two long extrusions be the full length of the shelf at 1203 millimeters. For the six inch shelf, the width will need to be a total of 153 millimeters. And for the 12 inch shelf, the width will need to be a total of 305 millimeters. To get the lengths we need, we'll need to take into account the front and back aluminum extrusions, which are 20 millimeters wide each. Now, to get the length of the two smaller extrusions, we will need to take the 153 millimeters and subtract 40 millimeters, which gives us 113 millimeters for the six inch shelf and take 305 millimeters and subtract 
40 millimeters to get 265 millimeters. To connect the aluminum extrusions, we will be using M5 by 10 millimeter button head bolts and M5 by 10 millimeter by one millimeter thin washers. And we will also need to drill a hole into each end of the longer extrusions. These holes will allow us to slide an Allen wrench through them to tighten the bolts that will be attached to the two smaller inner extrusions. You can learn more about this in my hanging display case video, link in the description. The holes will need to be one centimeter from the end of each extrusion. Now there are two possible ways to drill holes in the extrusions. One, take a ruler and measure one centimeter in from the end and then using a center punch, hammer it to mark the spot. Pour some cutting fluid on the spot, then take a 3 16 drill bit and drill a hole. Or two, using a jig. I found an amazing jig from Fun King 3D on the website thingverse.com where I used their 3D file and had it printed. This jig is great because it uses metal bushings in the hole so the jig doesn't get ruined by the drill. Also, it has two additional holes for drilling other spots on the extrusion. I went with the jig method, obviously. It's much easier and more precise. I put the jig on the extrusion, clamped it, and then using a 3 16 drill bit, made my hole. Once we're done drilling our holes, it's time to put the frame together and see how it looks. To do this, take an M5 by 10 millimeter button head bolt and an M5 by 10 millimeter by one millimeter washer and screw them to the ends of the smaller extrusion pieces. Then slide the washer and head of the bolt into the channel of the long 2020 frame and tighten it. Do this for all four bolts. Ta-da! A shelf frame. You're welcome. The acrylic. What you will need. 3 16 inch thick clear acrylic. Spring loaded tea nuts. M5 by 10 millimeter button head bolt. Tools, drill, 7 30 seconds drill bit, center punch, Allen wrench. Pro tip, do not remove the paper on the acrylic until the end when you're putting it all together. You don't wanna scratch it now. For this part, I decided to get my acrylic pre-cut to size. Yeah, I'm lazy, but I don't care. Is that so wrong? You could get a piece of acrylic and cut it to size yourself. Nobody's stopping you. This will also be a bit cheaper than having an acrylic place cut it for you, unless you're best friends with the person who owns the acrylic place. So if there's any acrylic places out there that wanna be my best friend, please contact me at popculturelivingroom at gmail.com. For the thickness of the acrylic, I chose 3 16 of an inch. If you are cutting the acrylic yourself, then cut it to the dimensions of the frame, 1203 millimeters by 153 millimeters, and 1203 millimeters by 305 millimeters. If you live in the US and have the place cut it for you, they may not be able to use metric. If this is the case, then you will use the measurements of 47.3125 inch by six inches and 47.3125 of an inch by 12 inches. This size is just a hair smaller in length, but you can't tell with the naked eye. We will be attaching the acrylic to the frame by using an M5 by 10 millimeter button head bolt and spring loaded T-nut. We are going to need to drill some more holes. So many holes to drill. For the six inch acrylic sheet, the hole will be one centimeter in from the side edge and three inches in the middle from the front edge. And for the 12 inch acrylic sheet, it will be one centimeter in from the side edge and six inches in the middle from the front. Now let's measure and mark our acrylic. Next, take a center punch and mark the intersection of the one centimeter distance and three and six inch distances. You don't need to hammer it. The acrylic is soft enough that you just need to push the center punch in and it will make a divot. Just like for the hanging bracket, the divot is there to keep the drill bit in place. Then, using a 7 32nd drill bit, slowly start drilling your holes. Just take it easy and slow. You don't wanna crack your acrylic. Once finished for the one side, repeat it for the other side. Next, take our spring-loaded T-nuts and, and slide them into the center of the side channel of the frame. Then, lay down your acrylic and line up the holes of the T-nut with the hole from the acrylic. Next, take an M5 by 10 millimeter button head bolt, slide it in the hole, and start screwing. Don't screw it in all the way, just the tip. Make sure that both bolts are in, and then line up the edges of the frame and the acrylic, and make sure that they are even, and then screw in the bolts tight.
right. These turned out perfect. Remember, as noted in the pro tip, keep the paper on the acrylic until we're ready to set up the shelf inside the display case. Putting it all together. What you will need. T brackets, three inches by three inches. Spring loaded T nuts. M5 by six millimeter flathead bolts. An M5 by 20 millimeter by one millimeter washers. Tools. Allen wrench. Level. The first thing we're gonna do is attach the hanging brackets to the shelf frame. As I mentioned previously, we will be using M5 by six millimeter flathead bolts and M5 by 20 millimeter by one millimeter washers. We use the washers to give us that extra tension and surface area to make sure our hanging bracket is on the frame tight and secure. Figure out where on the frame you wanna place your hanging brackets. In my case, I went on the second notch up from the bottom and placed the hanging bracket flat against the inside back frame on the side and then took my bolt and washer and started screwing in the bolt. I didn't tighten it all the way just yet. Then I screwed in the second bolt and washer and after I centered it and placed it parallel with the frame perfectly, I then tightened the bolts. Do this for the other side and then we'll move on to adding our shelf. Next, to attach the shelf, we will be using black T brackets and spring-loaded T nuts. For attaching the T bracket to the shelf, we will slide two T nuts into the side channel on the side of the frame. Then we will line up the holes of the T nut and the holes of the T bracket and take M5 by six millimeter flathead bolts and screw them into both holes. Don't make them super tight at first because next we'll move the T bracket and line the back edges up with the back edge of the frame. And then we'll tighten both bolts. Now, there are three holes on the T bracket, but because of their location and how the frame is, we can only screw in two bolts. Make sure you do this for both sides. Otherwise, you're gonna have a pretty awkward looking shelf. Now, take the paper off the acrylic sheets. Yes, you are allowed to do that now. And then, attach the sheets back onto the frame. Next, to attach the floating shelf to the hanging bracket. For this, we will be using T-nuts and M5 by six millimeter flathead bolts. You could put the T-nuts into the channel of the hanging bracket first and then attach the shelf, but if you're doing this alone, this could be a little bit difficult. So, what we will do is loosely attach all four T-nuts to the T-brackets. Because of their placement on my frame, my hanging brackets only allow me to slide the T-nuts in from the top. Slide in the 12 inch shelf first since that is going to go at the bottom. To do this, slide in the T-nuts on one side, one at a time, and then tighten them. Then slide in the T-nuts on the other side. After you've done this, slide the 12 inch shelf down and tighten. Next, add the six inch shelf the same way. Next, you will need to figure out exactly where you would like your top shelf to be. What I did was I put one of my figures on the shelf and figured out how far away from the top I wanted the figure to be. When I figured that out, I temporarily tightened the shelf to hold it into place and then I got a level and placed it on the shelf. I then leveled the shelf. Perfection. Next, position the bottom shelf and level it. You're all done now. Now it's time to add your figures. Sit back, grab a cold one, and admire your work. You deserve it. The possibilities are endless. The floating shelves look clean and dare I say, sexy. I don't plan on adding floating shelves to every section because I have vehicles coming. But the ones I added bring so much depth and style to the display case. The possibilities are endless. We see how they can benefit 1-6 scale figures, but they also do wonders for smaller scales and other collectibles. You could easily put several rows of 6-inch shelves on the back of your display case and have several levels of figures and collectibles in the background. Or you can mix and match several 6-inch shelves with 12-inch shelves. So much mixing and matching. It's amazing! Now, if you haven't made a display case yet, you can start with this video here. 